please make your way back here to the driving simulator. We have a very special interview coming up. Now, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Luchin Gierge. He's one of Nissan's senior innovator researchers. He's going to be telling us a little bit more about this brain-to-vehicle technology that Nissan has come forward with. Dr. Luchin, right. you can join me up here. Nice to have you, you here. Thank you. All right, so Dr. Luchin, you really are the brain behind the brain, right? I'm just one of the brains behind the brains. I had a, a very good team working together with me, so I'm just one of the brains. All right. Now tell me a little bit about how this research began. Well, it goes back to 2011 when we have started uh, collaboration with a uh, university in uh, Switzerland, Ecole Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne. And then sometime in 2015, it uh, became part of this um, senior innovation research within Nissan, which is an accelerated research, uh, research program. Overall, it's based on the long-term research that we've been doing using brain on workload and on understanding the driver while driving. All right, now what was the goal behind this research? So we wanted to find the, the best situation in which we could support the driver to obtain better driving experiences. All right, great. Now, tell me a little bit about um, this, this whole research. It just seems like so much. I hope it doesn't take any you know, drugs or surgery. I mean, what is it? Well, all you need is a device like, like this one. So we don't need to open the heads and really look inside. There's no, no surgery and no, no pain and nothing like that. <laughs> okay, right? but you always talk about brainwaves. Tell me a little bit about the brainwaves. So what we aim is very good personalization. This is why we look at specific activities in our brain in order to be able to predict the driver's next movement, in order to be able to detect when the driver is in disaccord with whatever an autonomous system would be doing for them. Okay, so why is it so important to measure those brain waves? Well, it is because it is here where we have the main information. It is here where we can really synchronize the support with the timing of the, of the movement. We are looking at something that is called motion-related potentials that appear in our uh, motor cortex. And with this, we can predict like 500 milliseconds before when the person would be steering. Also, we are looking at uh, another specific firing that is called error-related potentials, and they appear when the driver is in disaccord with uh, whatever would happen in an autonomous situation. Okay, so Dr. Lechen, what kind of benefits will this technology bring to drivers? So I think, even myself, I have not thought yet of all the possible benefits. We are now focusing on two, on two uh, scenarios. One is manual mode um, driving performance increasement. This is like in a situation when you would think of a novice driver driving on a winding road, and he would be every now and then a bit slow in turning the, the steering. If we can predict the timing of the movement, and if we have a very smart AI that can um, back up this, uh, this, del this small delay, then he would always be on the best path, having the feeling that he's much better in control. Then the second one would be the situation when we are deciding for a period of time that you don't drive, you just sit in an autonomous vehicle, but still expected to do every now and then uh, things for you. So then if the vehicle breaks and you're expected to do a lane change, then there will be a disaccord that we can measure in, in real time. That goes back to the um, system itself and the vehicle will be executing uh, a lane change, being always in accord with what you would want it to be doing. Yeah, it sounds amazing. and. You know, I can't help but to see this gentleman behind me. He's actually in the driving simulator with a headset on. I, what exactly is he doing? Well, uh, he's not ignoring you. He, he's uh, actually driving because we have uh, invited him to, to do for us. And what we've been doing, we've been measuring for these five minutes his brain activity, and we're streaming it uh, live on our, on our screens. Then um, before each uh, movement, mm -hmm. and then at the moment of the steering and after the steering, the patterns of uh, his activity are extracted. And also we're extracting the patterns of the steering itself and evaluating the way he steers through the curves. All right? All right. So I think we could talk to him. I was going to say, I think because he these? cannot see the screen, we need to ask him to, to okay. join us. So let's, let's see the results. We're going to check out how good of a driver you are. <laughs> All right, if you want to okay. stand here and you can look at the results. All right. 
So it's a two, it is a two-dimensional uh, evaluation sheet that we uh, that we have here. One tells us how smooth has he has been driving through um, through the curves, and the other one tells us how well he was synchronized with the um, environment. Now. Um, these averages are taken out in comparison with all the uh, other volunteers that we have had in, in, in these days. And, but also they can tell the IMX how the systems will be supporting him once we gather enough information for real-time uh, prediction of the moment. So once you can tell the timing that he will be moving, still two questions remain. How early you start the support? and what kind of support you do? How do you do the support itself? And this is a hint. This is the just was just a handshake uh, between him and the IMX. But already the IMX knows how to support him. What does it mean? It means in terms of smoothness through the corners, the AD system will be helping him to drive a lot smoother because there is space for increasement. In terms of synchronization. It means that maybe we don't need to start the, the support system that early, but we should be starting it earlier than, the time, than his, own, his own timing. So it has been just a few minutes, just the first interaction, but already our systems could learn how he would be supported in order for him to feel that he can control better, that he performs better, not that he is overwritten by uh, some uh, safety system or some autonomous uh, functions. All right, well, perfect. How about a round of applause for our brain to vehicle volunteer? Thank you so much for your time. All right, Dr. Lichin, final question. Uh, what does your research and all this technology tell us more broadly about the future of mobility? I, I strongly believe, and it is in the, Nissan's DNAs as well, that even in the future when we will have very smart systems, these systems should not just remove the driver. We should not lose the driving pleasure itself. We should not lose this positive experience. So as we will be developing smart systems that will be enhancing the driver's experience, both in manual mode and both in autonomous mode, and this is one of the perfect examples of the technology that we do in this direction. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Lu Chen.